Subscribe to Rootstem Gaming before the 1st of April for your chance to win this fully painted Noise Marine figure. Welcome to Rootstem Gaming and on this painting video we're going to be basically talking about some undercoats. And the reason we're going to be talking about some undercoating is Again, part of the basics that I'm going to be doing is just to show a lot of sort of new players or newbies the differences that uh, undercoating can do to figures. So we're going to be looking at undercoatings, we're going to be looking at prepping figures for um, a start or basically to, to start when you actually come to start painting. I will get it out eventually, I don't re-record these. I'm going to start by talking about a white undercoat. Now I always base the figures, this is part of the Infinity uh, wall set. Um, it's not a Games Workshop model. Uh, they are quite nice but they are metal figures. Which is why I'm wearing gloves all the time with them. Now a lot of people say oh it's metal, it's fine, you don't have to wear gloves. I personally do, I use a lot, I use a lot of thin layers. If you do use a lot of thin layers, airbrushing uses really thin layers. When you do this... Or you grab hold of the figure to move it. Some people have the stands, but you still got to move the figure. Because with the stands, I can't imagine someone buying 12 of them to do a full squad. Or, in my particular case, sometimes I can do 30 to 40 figures at a time. I'm not buying 40 stands uh, <laughs> just to put all the figures on. So, there will be times when you grab hold of the figure. Now, your hands naturally have oils in them. Which can be quite acidic, which is why if you ever go to a, li a specialist library with really, really ancient books, they insist you wear certain gloves before touching the paper, because touching the paper itself can dissolve the actual uh, the, the paper itself. Sorry, touching the paper with your fingers. Um, so I tend to use a glove just to make sure that I minimise the amount of rubbage that you can actually get when you use a thin undercoat, especially on metal models. Now on metal models, you don't have to prep them. Uh, unlike like a resin model, which I always recommend that you wash those with, little, with warm water, a little bit of soapy liquid and an old toothbrush so you can get really get into all the crevices. That way that you'll not get any of the agent, that's the releasing agent. And when you, you can tell, because when you actually spray a resin model with either black or white spray and it's got releasing agent on there, it looks like it's peeling off. So, <laughs> and it will peel off eventually as well horrible um, this one's a white I've done an all-over white spray um, now the only thing I'm gonna say for new people that I'm actually painting with white white you've got to paint everything and if you miss anything it's obvious and if you miss the underneath it's obvious whereas when you're painting black if you miss something on the underneath and you forget to paint it it's fine because it's black, it's hidden. Now the only thing is with black, is black will always, always give you darker colors. So sometimes, especially if you're painting bright colors, you've got to build. Some people with airbrushing prefer to use white and then they'll use like a recessed shade to make that black before putting the main color over. I'm gonna be showing you how to do that as well in this video. I'm gonna be having to go over myself. I don't normally do that, normally I build. And this with the black is something that you would normally build up on you can do a reversal with that as well that's an airbrushing technique so you can paint black and then put white on and you can paint white and then put black into the recesses it's all up to you what you want to do but that's how i normally prep metal just build the metal figure uh, and then of course glue it to, glue it to, build the metal figure make sure it's all trimmed and nice uh, spray paint it depending of course upon the colors that you wanted to use and then spray paint it accordingly if you are new to painting don't spray white if you're new to painting spray black because again if you make mistakes they're hidden and you're not going to sit there going oh god i've got to do this the thing i find with painting is it's like when i used to start a play this is going to sound like an odd analogy when i play guitar if you can play a song and you can play it simply well you learn better because you've done you've achieved something if you can achieve painting a figure, yet you might have missed a few things, but you are, look at that figure and you're happy with it, you're more than likely to carry on painting. So, always when you're starting to learn, learn how to use black. And then of course you can start coming in with greys and golds and silvers, but that, that's going to be for another video. Now I'm going to quickly talk about prep 
on a plastic miniature. Now the reason I'm going to quickly talk about prep on a plastic miniature is because it can be completely different. This, as you can probably see from the beginning of this video, if I put it on there and edited it correctly, is the Noise Marine uh, that I'm going to be painting for one lucky winner. Now, I've partly built parts of it and then left other bits on because it's a lot easier to paint. I've put them on the sticks with some uh, of the tack of blue. And these, what I'm going to do with these is to spray these differently. The body itself is quite a dark, can be quite a dark body. So that's going to be sprayed black. That's going to be primarily red. Now red for me, you should always go from a dark base coat. So that's going to be sprayed black as well. But the head, the head's going to have the zebra stripes that you see on the actual, um, on the picture. So I'm going to spray paint that and fisting. Um, I'm going to paint that with the grey. I'm not going to paint that with the... No, I'm going to say Mephiston Red then, but that's a completely different. I'm going to paint that with the grey uh, primer. And then shade it up to white because I'm wanting some nice recesses. The Mohawk, which is going to be incredibly bright colours. And I mean very bright colours. Is going to be sprayed white. And that, when I put the colours on, even though some of the colours might be red. It's going to be incredibly vibrant. Now, as you can see from the blue text, I have strategically positioned, I'm going to say strategic because I like the word, uh, bits of the tack in areas where you're naturally going to get a gluing process. This is because, for me, when you're gluing plastic, you should use polystyrene cement or plastic glue. And if you've got paint in between the areas that you're trying to bond, it doesn't bond. So I always cover up the areas where I'm going to be using the glue. Uh, it's be the same on the opposites. They'll be all covered up. And then that's why there's a little stripe of, of, uh, of attack running down his helmet. Because the inner stripe of the mohawk will be clear. That will be clear. And that's where I'm going to be attaching both the figures together. It also stops your paint from being ruined as well. Because sometimes, depending on your plastic glue, it can make the paint look a little bit weird. Um, and that's why they've got the little nodules in there to make sure that those areas are going to remain clear of paint so that when I take the tack off I'm going to be able to glue the two parts together and they're going to be able to bond properly so I've got my white figure ready for prepping I'm going to be using gaming black now the reason I'm going to use gaming black is because it's a lot thinner I can pretty much use it neat maybe with a little bit of water and um, I can I, I can put Thin amounts on them and I can layer it up so I can have bits looking a little bit grey and then of course I can have bits looking black if I want to. I'm going to try and make sure that my airbrush is on narrow, uh, a narrow nozzle. You can, if you want to, you can paint this in. So you can actually use a normal brush but you won't get those lovely looking transitions that you get when you're actually using a, uh, an airbrush. It'll be more of a solid colour, so like from a solid to a solid. Whereas with the airbrush, if you go lightly in and a little more intense in the uh, the more in the inner recesses, you should get a nice transition going.
28 mil figures and i've basically tried to go for a realistic what would be in shadow look on these um rather than sort of like oh yeah the armor plates want to look this. this is because these are smaller now on the bigger figures this is where i'm going to change tact which is why of course i've started recording again these i'm going to these are basically going to have a i'm going to try and go around the armor panels so that the edges of the armor panels are going to be darker and then the inners of the armor panels are going to be lighter um i always you can do this on larger figures because you can can get away with it it's a lot easier to do on the smaller figures i don't see the point um just try and get as realistically shading as you possibly can on a smaller figure whereas on a bigger figure if you can uh again still the realistic shading so underneath the legs when you're going to go down here make sure that's dark but of course around the armor panels you can make sure that you've got a nice bit of spray and you get that lovely sort of inner bit that looks bright and then that uh, outer bit that looks darker um, as you see on a lot of um, airbrushing videos to be honest <laughs> Next up, we're going to do a little bit. Sorry, we're going to do a little bit of opposite to what we've already been doing. So we've already got the big lad with all of his pre-shade. We've already got some of the other little ones with their pre-shades. What we're looking at now is hitting the opposite, and I'm wanting on this particular pre-shade. I'm not wanting a huge. I'm going to get me a little bit of card as well because I'm not wanting massive areas that are really bright i'm just wanting corners um so i'm basically just going to be concentrating on the edges of certain panels and i'm going to be using a nice little bit of a shield just so we can get just the edges of certain things so i'm trying to make it look a bit more stylized and a bit darker than the rest of the armor that we're doing pre-shading uh, this is with the sort of like little mini bugs there and this is I believe this is like one of the big casters he was sprayed black and what I did was kind of just spray just tap it tap the airbrush spraying 
in certain directions just to pick up the highlights um, that can be done as well um, it depends on what you're wanting to do I didn't do that with the black because I'm wanting the black to be in the recesses so this is a good way of doing it opposite so if you spray it black this is probably a better way if you're just learning how to do it so if you get the figure get the white mix it up as, as nice as you want so spray the black so that if you miss anything it don't matter and then from an angle just spray white on and then when you come to paint the figure then you can pretty much do what you want I've still got the figure that's completely purely black because of course I'm going to be doing a layering effect with that one so I'm not going to be doing any pre-shade but that's it that's it it's a simple technique um, a lot of people can get it wrong um, but you just sometimes you just need a helping hand um, so that's going to be it for this week if you're already on rootstem.co.uk there should be some more videos up there by the time you see this one possibly some more painting videos and there'll be definitely some more battle reports that's uh, been put up there as well but thank you very much for watching guys um like i say you can go to rootstone.co.uk for uh, asking questions about commission work because i also do commission work as well you can even from the store order miniatures uh, on commission orders so you've not even got to message me you can just go straight on there straight to the store see what i've got available click it it'll be ready within normally four to six weeks but i'll be honest at the moment, it's uh, we are running through those a lot quicker uh, than the four to six week turnaround time. We've just got to give ourselves some leeway in case anything happens. Or in case somebody decides to order a crap load of stuff, as has happened in the past. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully, what's coming up soon as well will be a painting video regarding the Noise Marine. And, of course, these Infinity War figures you just see just off the corner there. I'm going to be doing some videos on me painting these up as well. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.